All right, hey guys. So today I'm kind of doing a tutorial on how to make these kinds of images. They're kind of an infrared, um, vaporwave, trippy kind of style with a lot of teals and blues and pinks and purples in them, which really goes with the vaporwave kind of theme. Uh, so I first saw these just online somewhere and then this guy on Instagram uh, called Jas Davis posted a bunch of them. I thought they were pretty cool, so I figured out how to make them. Now I'm going to share it because I think a lot of people are trying to learn. So anyways, you're going to need Photoshop to make these. So we'll just get started. So you're going to open up Photoshop here, and you can see I already have a few of them I've already edited that are here and done. But So we'll start over right here. So you're going to click on your image to open it up. And when it comes to open up in Photoshop, it's going to come to this menu. And you're going to want to make sure you're using raw images to do this because you're going to need all the information that they have stored in them. So you can do some preliminary things on your image just to get the image ready for being edited. So you're going to bring the shadows all the way up, bring the blacks all the way up. This isn't necessary for every image, but for this one here where it was really, really harsh lighting, it's necessary because you can see how dark all the trees are. And so anyways, when you're picking your image, it's kind of cool to have one that's during the daytime uh, and have a really clear blue sky uh, and really clear uh, trees or some foliage, anything in it that you can change to be a different color like pink and purple. Uh, we're gonna get rid of, bring the highlights down a little bit as well, probably to 40 or minus 40. Clarity, minus 10. Um, leave the temperature and the tint what you had it before. Then come on over to your lens correction. Move the chromatic aberration. Enable the profile connections. Now depending on your image, you're gonna want to uh, either make the vignette high or kind of keep it low. I'd like to keep it around here, the distortion. I like to bring up just a little bit this way because you can kind of see how it bulges and uh, how it looks too uh, far away with the trees. So you want to keep the horizon kind of flat and I find 110 works pretty good for that. So then what you're going to do here is open the image and you'll have the image here in Photoshop. So now what you're going to do is go to the menu here on the right side and you're going to unlock it and then you're going to hit control J and that's going to duplicate your layer here and so for your second layer you're going to start by turning it into an overlay and then you're going to make the opacity probably some 60 somewhere between 60 and 75 we'll do we'll do 75 for this one and just leave it that way so you can see the difference between it being normal it just sits the same way obviously and then you put it on an overlay and it's a whole different kind of texture so what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to this little menu right here and we're going to click on the channel mixer and we're going to use one of those so with the channel mixer the first thing you're going to do is click monochromatic and you're going to see how it takes away all the saturation there and makes it monochromatic of course and then you're going to change the reds to 100. You're going to bring the greens all the way up to 200 and then you can't see anything. And then the blues you bring all the way down to minus 200. So you can see now how we have that kind of HDR look to the image. Everything's all monochromatic, really desaturated, but a high detail in the sky. And so you're going to leave that here. And next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab from the menu down here you're gonna grab the hue and saturation thing here and this is gonna be where we pick all the colors and the tones that you're gonna use in the image so the trees are mainly yellow and green so we're gonna focus on that first so just bring that all the way up not that it's gonna stay that way but just so you can see what you're doing and slide the hue tab over until you kind of get the color you're thinking of so you see so you can make it red pink bluish purple we're gonna stick with kind of a Right before it turns to that real purple right here, we're gonna stick with that pink. So probably around 110. And then saturation, 
you can see you can just pick how where it's at we're gonna stick with about 80 saturation I think should be good maybe we'll do 75 and then you move to the greens and do the same kind of thing check out where it is uh, move it down about the same maybe a little more just because the starting colors so go around minus 45 for this image and then the same thing but we're gonna do 90 for the greens and then you're gonna go to the cyans and the blues and the cyans and the blues are what all the uh, colors in the sky are gonna be so you're gonna bring the saturation of them up just a bit with the cyans to start maybe bring it down just to minus five the blues are really gonna make the biggest difference you can see as soon as you start messing with the blues so bring the blues up maybe about the 70 you can try make this a bit bigger yeah that's a lot better uh, so you're gonna keep them at 70 with the saturation probably and then this is where you're going to change your color so I personally don't like how the super crazy color is when it's that way it's almost too much but I mean it depends on how trippy you want to make this you can make it fucking red purple backgrounds whatever you want blue uh, I like to keep it just down a little bit before it gets to that super kind of teal like this where it's like minus 25 it's too much kind of teal for me I like it being probably around minus 20 May 18 19 doesn't really matter you can it's all up to you but that's what I like for my settings and then you're gonna leave that there magentas there aren't really they're just kind of on the palm trees in this photo and you can't really notice them unless you pump the saturation up a lot and it obviously is completely distorted if you do that so We'll just leave the magentas, then reds, kind of the same kind of thing. You can mess with them a little bit here too. Uh, and we just fill in the last little piece there with them, 65, minus 45, and there kind of fills in the trees really nicely. So then that's pretty much everything with the hue and saturation. Then after that, you're gonna mess with a few other things here. We're gonna use the vibrancy tools and the curves. So you're gonna grab the vibrancy, bring the saturation up to maybe 80. Now it's a little too high. 60, 50. 50 looks good. It's real nice and looks like that vaporwave kind of style that you see on the photos. And we've got those really cool crazy colors. I like how it's really just two kind of tones. You just have blues and pinks, and those are the only things in the photo that you can see. So you can leave the vibrancy that way and then you got the curves and this is where you're going to kind of mess with the image yourself and this is going to be all personal preference don't just follow my curves but generally or generally the best thing to do with curves is kind of like an s where it starts up and goes down this way it's kind of like this obviously it doesn't work for this photo because of uh, how it was taken and where it was with the lighting uh, and this stupid dark area over here so this one is kind of going to be a sorry this one is going to be a bit more subtle sorry I'm not that great at talking into the mic yet and concentrating on this at the same time but anyways yeah we're going to kind of just play around with this I, I honestly take forever editing photos just because I'm very indecisive with how I want it to look and kind of be finished. So anyways here, if you watch what's going on, if I pull it down, you can see more detail in the bottom in the sand. But if I pull it up, the trees pop a bit more, so it's nice to find a bit of a balance. Then what you can just do is add multiple points onto it. And you can kind of pull this one down here towards the top and get the detail in the sand still. And then this one here, you can kind of pop up more and get those bright kind of vibrant colors coming in on the palm trees. And so this is looking pretty good right here. You could leave it this way if you want, but we're going to uh, mess with it a little bit more. And we're just going to add some grain and make it a little distorted. 
So what we're going to do for the grain is you're going to come down here and click on this button right here like I just did. And it's going to create a new layer right here over top. And then you're going to go down to edit and you're going to click fill. And you leave it at 50% gray, opacity 100%. So that's good. Uh, and then we're going to have it pop up like this in gray. So then you're going to come down to the filter uh, tab right here. You can go down to noise and add noise. I know this is different than Lightroom if you guys use Lightroom and you're used to just going to the uh, adding grain tab, but this is how you th we're doing it in Photoshop. Uh, anyways, it has a 20%, and this is all personal preference. Again, you can make it as noisy, or I guess this is going to look like the grain, as grainy as you want. I personally, I think 20 is a little low for it. It looks nice if it's a bit wider, so. 40, maybe 50, well, let's do it pretty grainy on this one. Let's let's do 60, just because we can. And we'll leave it at 60 here, and you click OK. And then you're gonna grab the layer here and change the type of it. So this is basically, if you don't know uh, about Photoshop and Lightroom, this is kind of the, uh, or Premiere, I don't think they have this in Lightroom even, but this is basically how the layer is placed on top of the others. You can click overlay, screens, lighten, color dodge. They all do different things, but for this, we're going to click soft light and it's going to lay it over top there. And you can see how super ridiculously grainy this looks. And you can see that's without it on. And that's with it on. And then if we zoom in super far, you can see the difference. Oh, see, it's all smooth here. But the same thing, with it being really smooth over top of things in the images, then uh, sometimes it looks really bad because it looks too smooth. It looks so fake with it this way. And then you add the grain, and it can kind of blend everything together a bit. That's just my view on using it sometimes. And it doesn't work for every image, but for this one, because of how distorted everything is and uh, the colors in the beach, I think it looks pretty good with it. I, th I wouldn't have put it so high as 60. I think that was too high for this one. I would have put it at 50. But anyways, then you're done now. Uh, the only other thing that you can do that I like to do is I like to just mess around with the layer and kind of distort it a little bit. So you can add a blur on top of it, a uh, Gaussian blur right here. And you can change however much you want it to be. See how ridiculously you can mess it up. I probably put it four on top of it. And then also I go and grab this here, or actually you could just do command T and that's for transform. And then you to go on the X transformation here and you just drag it over a bit. See if you leave it regular, then you can just drag it over really, really subtly just so it gets that small bit of distortion on it. And I think it looks pretty cool when you do that. I mean, you can go really far out with it and just make it look ridiculously distorted. Or you can do a little bit, or none at all, of course, whatever you decide. But it's just an option I like doing. I think it looks best when it's not really distorted on this photo personally. But I just add a little bit off to the side. It just adds a nice, cool little touch. So after this, uh, you're just done. You just can go to File and Export as soon as you have the transformation. And you export as Format. You're going to click JPEG, Quality, whatever you want it to do, depending on what file size. Then just Export All and click wherever you want it to be. You just go to uh, the Dropbox here. And there, now we're done.